Okay, I'll start. So this is Python for neuroimaging, the first session for beginners. Uh, this is for someone who have no engineering background and who have interest in learning Python. I'll explain what Python is um, and explain what our goal is in, uh, in three to four sessions. There will be co four components. One is uh, Python basics, array, and pipelines, and tables, and figures. Each session will end with, with practical, and you'll be having them in your own time, and then um, try it. And I'll be checking the practical next time uh, as, as we go along together. So Python is a high level programming language with dynamic semantics. You don't, I don't know what that means. You don't have to what that means. Uh, it is free. It has an easy grammar and loads of libraries, uh, including neuroimaging libraries. So why we learn Python? We have many subjects, many sites, and many files. We have many pipelines to apply, and we have many projects as well. So we cannot rely on manual processing all the time. So manual processing is not only time consuming, but it's also error prone. Uh, if you are doing one pipeline manually for all the projects, you'll be making a mistake, giving um, wrong inputs uh, at some point. So um, we can automate this using Python. But since uh, Python is free and easy and has loads of libraries, including your imaging, clever people give their own ideas in Python and publish it online. And using Python, we can apply them quickly. So goals in three to four sessions with me is uh, not to be a software engineer or not to create a killer software or not to invent new algorithms. It is more, more getting familiar with errors in Python, which we will get which anyone gets, uh, we will just get family with them so you don't get scared of them. And be able to search for Python related questions in web or Python related errors in web. And lastly, and most importantly, use Python at least a bit of bit, at least a bit in your projects. So learning process is like that for Python and many other things. You learn it by solving a problem. Uh, you will solve it either asking someone or you will search the web and you will solve another problem and you will do the same. You will search the web or you will ask others. In that process, you will be learning how to use and what you can use in Python. No, you, there's no need to memorize. Uh, you just gotta know what is there. And again, learning from watching is very minimal. Learning from reading books is very minimal for stuff like learning Python. So you have to do it for yourself. You have to solve the problem. And that is what I, um, what I, um, what I wish to take you to. So um, we'll be using Python 3.7 or any Python 3. Installing Anaconda installs not only Python, but uh, most of the scientific modules for you. So it makes installation easier. So for the next time, go to www.anaconda.com and download Anaconda 3.7. We're not gonna use it for today, but make it ready for next one. So it has, um, when you install Anaconda, it has Anaconda Navigator, where you have Jupyter Notebook, which we will use next time which also has a Python console, which you will use um, today, and a bunch of other things. Okay, but today it will be enough just to have Python interpreter in terminal. So just uh, open your terminal and try typing which Python or which IPython, and just go into IPython if you have them. So IPython is same as Python, but it has more functionalities like being able to use LS, being able to use CD, so you can move around easily, and uh, colors, so we'll be using IPython. Told you there will be four components, basics, Python basics, array, pipelines, tables, and figures. 
Today we will talk about basics. Uh, this is most boring stuff of the all, but this is where we get the most of the errors. So let's get familiar with, with the errors that we get from here. I'll be talking about data type and loop today. So first, I'll have to go to the variable, what variable is. If you, have, if you don't have any background in engineering, you, you probably don't know or don't have to know what variable is. So variable is uh, just it. It is, it is one. So A is one. We are assigning something to it. So A is a variable. And one is what A represents. I'll open my terminal so I can go along with you. I'll make this here. So we are here. So this is my terminal. I'm going to open Python with IPython. I first want to check which Python I'm using by doing which Python. When I do this, it shows you um, what kind of Python uh, in which location you'll be using when you type Python. So when I type Python, this Python within my home directory on the Anaconda on the bin runs. Okay, I'm gonna try the same thing with IPython. So it shows you the IPython in the same directory in under Anaconda 3. So this means that I'll be using the IPython included in the Anaconda. Someone may see something like this in Python. This means you'll, you'll be using system Python. That's fine for today. So um, I'll just do IPython. Yeah, now you are, into, you, you are in a Python interpreter. It is a very simple looking, and you have input one, and uh, it says the version, Python 3.7.3. It may say different version for you. But let's try typing A equals one. So I just did A equals one, the number changed into two. Okay, but for the second, waiting for the second input. Let's, uh, so A, is one. So we just assigned one into A. This is very simple, isn't it? I'll just go um, past this. Uh, yeah. Okay. So A is one. Let's assign something different. A equals three. So what is A now? A is three now, right? I can also assign 3.14 to B. So B is 3.14 now, okay? But this is to, to us, to non-engineering people, three is number and 3.14 is also a number, but we can also assign them as an integer. Programming languages can also assign them as integer because there's no um, decimal points. Here you have decimal points, so you have, um, you. The, the Python assigns it as a float. Let's look at the type of it. Type, what is the type of A? Type is uh, the A, which was three, is integer. What is type of B, which was 3.14? It's a float, okay? Let's assign C to ha ha. Try this, then you'll be getting an error. Ha ha is not defined. If you write some characters, without quotation marks, they will look for another variables. But we don't want another variable haha, -ha. we want strings of haha, -ha, just, just characters haha, -ha. we have to do this. So whenever you use characters, you have to do quotation mark haha. -ha. Okay, now see what type haha -ha is. So it's a string. Quite simple, isn't it? Um, sometimes you want the number as characters, not number, um, number as the number that you can add or multiply or subtract. Sometimes you want three as character. You do this and look at the type of it. It's a string, not an integer. Okay, that's very simple. Sometimes you want group of items, not a single item. You sometimes want three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
as a one single variable, sometimes one 3.14 and so on as a one single variable. Or sometimes you can, you, you, you want haha, ho ho, Kevin, the strings as a one single group of list. So this is how you form a list. A equals, you do open brackets, and then just type the list of numbers that you want to go. Yep. Try A. Is this. And let's look at the type of it. Is a list now. It's not an integer. A is not an integer. Although A is a group, A is a group of integers. Type of A variable is a list. Okay. I'll create B, which is a list of floats, 3.14, 8.9, 3.3, 2.1. Okay, I'll look at the types again. It's a list. Same for list of strings. C, list, open brackets, haha, ho, ho, Kevin. Type is a list, right? Group of items is a list. Simple, right? Be sure to give brackets in the beginning and the end, in the end. Okay, even if you, when you have one item, it is a still a list if you define them within the brackets like this. So A inside four is a still a list. It's not an integer, it is a list. Okay, also what if um, A is empty? Let's do this, A is empty. Let's look at the list. Yeah, it is still a list, even if the list is empty. So variable A directs to an empty list. Still, it is a list. That's okay. Okay, let's create a list uh, like this. A equals first Kevin and rain, cup and keyboard. So um, when I want to get the first item of, an in, of, of, a, of a list, I do uh, A, open bracket, and a number of the item, and close bracket. But bear in mind in Python, the indexing number starts from zero. So if I put zero here, I'll be getting the first item of list A. Right? What if I want the string rain? From the list, I put one and I put two. What should I get? Yep, and three. Yep, okay. It is a little bit confusing, I know, um, to start from zero, but you will get used to it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it at this point. Okay, now guess, just, just um, guess or type them and see what they do. You have a list which is Kevin, Rain, Cop, and Keyboard. And what do you think this will do? Len, open bracket, A, close bracket. Len is an abbreviation for length. It returns a length of A. So Len, A. How long is it? It's a list with four items. Okay. What do you think this will do? A plus Another list, another item, edit and name. What do you think this will do? Go to A, which was this. If I do plus another list, this appends this new list into A. Simple, but try A again. A is not changed, right? We defined A, we added something to A, but we didn't set this as another variable. So A is still A. So in order to update A, you have to do A equals A, previous A plus the one that you wanna add. Yep, doesn't return anything because you just assigned it. I'll do A. Now A is updated. Quite simple, isn't it? You know what this um, do is getting the zero, one, two, third item. So if I do this, you will get cup. Yeah. Okay. 
And we didn't do this. Guess what this will do? A minus one. It gets the last item. All right. And this, just guess it. You can guess it. A, two to four. Yeah, it looks like a range. So it's getting cup and keyboard, which are here. So two represent third item and four represents fifth item. It doesn't include edit, so it's getting um, so it's getting two and three. Cup and keyboard. Okay? It's a bit confusing because it is like a one minus minus last one. Don't worry about it. You can just try and try again, you'll get it. So try A again. Yeah, it's like this, then try A. It's not just string A. So don't confuse with the variable A and string A. Same goes with B. So B was like this. If I do B, it's a character B, the string B. All right. So you can just guess what it do. So A is three, and you are adding A plus five, which is something. And you're doing this weird sign too. It looks like a times to me, so it is simple. Let's type them. A equals three, B equals eight plus five. Uh, so now B is eight. Let's do B times two, 16, simple. Now do this. So name is Kevin. You can write your name. Full underscore name is name. I'm adding name, which is a string to uh, adding another string in the end of it. Sure. What do you think this will be? Concatenate the strings with plus. Simple, right? Let's look at the full name. Yep. Full name is Kevin Cho. Yeah, let's try this. Full name, which is a string plus B, which was 16 integer. If I do this, I get an error. We cannot add strings to numbers, if you think about it. You can't add um, alphabets to numbers. It has to be both alphabets or letter of number that is in strings. Do you get that? So it works like this. Name three. You can add this easily, but you cannot add three two strings. So in order to use plus, the type of the data must be the same. This is one of the most um, common errors that we get in Python, the mo most common errors that I get Python as a beginner. Okay. Okay, now it's a loop. I think many of you are already familiar with a loop. So guess what we'll do, what this will do. We'll define A which is Kevin, Rain, Cup, and Keyboard. So four words in A, which is this. It has a tab in it, tab or four spaces, and then print word. What do you think it will do? Yeah, let's do it. Word in A print word press one more enter yeah it's printing one item in a loop and the next item in the next loop third item in the next and last item in the next kevin rain cup keyboard yeah it's quite simple so it's going through the list so word represent each items in the each iterations okay so let's try this for word in a print string word what do you think this will do it's just printing word four times so this word the variable word that represent each item is a it is not the same as the string A, string word. So I'm going over the same concept all the time. 
variable and strings are different. This is the concept you have to have as a beginner in um, any programming language. Okay, this is printing something, um, the, the string, you know, each loop. Doesn't, doesn't matter what the variable word is. We are just printing the string word. Try this then. For ha. In A, I'm going to print ha. So ha represent each items in uh, iterations and it's printing them. We can also do um, zzz in A, print zzz D. Make up your own variable for um, random word by Kevin in A, print random word by Kevin. It works nicely. Any word, any variable that you give in a loop, you use the same word without string quotation mark, then it's the variable. All right, so simple. Okay, and I, again, it's a variable, it is a string, it is a variable. Okay, okay, now conditions. What do you think this will do? So my name is Kevin, oh, not my name, okay, name is Kevin, and if name equals Kevin, print string hello plus name, else print who are you, string plus name plus question mark. I think you already know it, Kevin, your name, Kevin, Kevin, if name equals Kevin, bear in mind there is two condition mark, two equals, okay? It is different from single equal. If you do single equal, you are assigning something to a variable. If you do double equal, you are comparing uh, the items on the left and items on the right. That's uh, um, one of the things that you have to remember, I'm sorry. Uh, and if you press enter, there will be automatic tab here. This tab, uh, just, just please mind this gap. You have to have this after conditional statement or for loop. So print hello plus name. Else must be in the same um, position as if. And if you press enter again, it will do uh, tabs for you. Let's do print again. Print who are you? And plus name plus question mark. What do you think it will print? It prints hello Kevin because the name was equal to Kevin. So it met this conditional statement. So it's running something below here. If my name was not Kevin, let's do my name, Diane. Um, do arrows up, up arrow twice, then you will get this. And let's press enter again. Who are you, Diane? Okay, since the name is not Kevin, it is running something below the else statement. Simple. You can, if you don't get it, don't worry about it. Um, you will get it uh, when you literally run them. So please mind the gaps. Yeah, you know what it, what it does. Let's go back. Try doing something like this. Uh, go up by using up arrow, and then go to the print, and just remove the line here. And go down by down arrow and press enter. See, there's an indentation error. If statement or for statement have to have a tabs or at least um, consistent spacing on the things that you want to run for this statement. Okay, so tabs or spaces, it is very important for Python. This can be confusing at some times, uh, but by having this tabs for, for running the conditions, uh, it, it, it makes um, scripting much easier later or relatively easier than other scripts other kind of languages. Okay, here, see, they are not aligned, so this will give error again, press up, up, so I'll give four more spaces, 
and down and enter. Oh, it's running because I'm not sure why. Else, print. Why are you dying? I'm not really sure why it shouldn't run. But let's 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 keep them. Yes, let's keep them as an error. Um, that this shouldn't happen. Okay, okay. Anyway, this this is wrong. So you, this space must match this space. Okay. What if you have else in the wrong space? Yep, it's giving syntax error, invalid syntax. Okay, it's cut because of the tabs here. Okay, um, you can give another statement, uh, another condition. If name is Kevin or Kangek, you print this or you print this. So or can come in as well. So name Kangek, if name is Kevin or name is Kangek, by the way, Kang is my Korean name. Uh, so print hello name else. See the spacing has to be aligned. Print who are you name and the question mark. So now name is Kang Ek is printing this for when name is Kevin. Arrow up. It also prints hello the first statement, okay? When name is something else, it prints, who are you? The second statement, okay? It's fairly simple, you will get it. And you can also, um, something, um, you can give another extra statement, not only if and else, you can also give um, else if, abbreviated as elif, so if my name, what is name now? So my name is Diane now. If name equals Kevin. If name is Kevin, I'm gonna print hello. Name. If else if name is Diane, I'm gonna print hello again. Or if the name is something else, I'm going to print who are you. All right. Name, if name is Zenya, says who are you. Okay. You can give different conditions for Kang Ek and Kevin and Diane using Elif. Okay. And now it is importing libraries. I told you there are many other tools that people made. Um, clever people make uh, this super killer softwares for you and you can just import them. There are many. Hey, can you ask a question? Yes. Could you have as many elifs as, as you want? Yes. And you can only have one if though in like one loop? One if, yes. Or you can have many, many elifs. Yes. And one so else. Like, hello, Kevin. Hello for Kevin. Like, what's up for Diane? How's yep. it going for Jen? Okay, yep. cool. That's it. Thank you. Nice. Okay. Um, I'm gonna import the code, the tool called OS. Let's do import OS. This should be installed in every Python. So import OS. It works like this. Let's run OS. Dot. Get. CWD. This means um, run something inside OS tool called get CWD. You will get this later and you just run that. It returns where you, um, where you are in, in Linux current working directory. Okay, let's import um, RE is a Python regrex tool and let's run something RE dot search you will search a number which is uh, a single number or more than one number in whatever this 
and you print the group, then this successfully extracts only digits from the given text. Okay, I'm just showing you there are tools. NumPy, there's a cool thing called NumPy, which we'll do tomorrow. This can create a random numbers. Random, random, give the shape of random array, then it turns, gives you random array. Just shape three rows and three columns. Create again. Since it's random, it's different from the previous one, previous run. Okay. And we can also do uh, import SciPy. And we can also import like this. Uh, last time we did, we imported NumPy as NP. So whenever we were using NumPy, we used NP to call NumPy. Okay. This is uh, abbreviating the name of the library. Or you can, or we can import a few specific functions within the whole library, like, like this. Import stats. This is calling the stats library, which are inside SciPy. And in this stats, there's a t-test. Stats, t-test, independent t-test. I want to compare 10, 27, blah, 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 against this. Then this returns t value and the p value. Right. Okay, I'm just showing you we can import other libraries using import function. Okay, you don't have to know what we are doing here, but just know we can call other libraries fairly simply. This is why uh, we like Python. But you know, it was really tedious typing everything here. After all that VI, we're not going to do anything here, okay? We can use VI. Let's exit from this. Then it, it uh, makes you back into the terminal. So now it's a terminal. You can open, um, you can, if you don't have VI in, in the current terminal or, or current library, you can open any um, text editor to write a script. I think Notepad will also work, but I'll be using VI. So I'm gonna create a practice.py. So I'm creating an empty text file called practice.py. And I'm gonna write import OS and then print, uh, I'm gonna print something I am in. So this is just printing. And also I'm gonna print os.get CWD, this is what we did, right? And I'm gonna save them, save. And I'm gonna exit and run this Python script and see what it does. Exit, Q, colon Q, and then Python. Before I run it, I wanna check which Python that I'm using to run this Python script. I'm using Anaconda Python, so I'll be using Python, Anaconda Python, and practice.py. See, this is how you are, how you you will be running your Python script. Just Python, and the name of the text file called um, the practice.py. Okay, I'm gonna open the VI again. Um, print the line. I'll do a equals three. Uh, if a is greater than three, print a is greater than three. If, if, this means a is equal or less than three, right? And print a is not greater than three. I'm gonna save, I'm gonna exit, I'm gonna run Python. Since A was three, it was not greater than three. Okay, we're gonna open the script again. I'm gonna copy that statement, paste the statement, and change the statement here. A, if A is equal or greater than three. I'm gonna save them, go out, I'm gonna run them. 
So in the first statement is is running the second part because a is not greater than three. But on the second statement, since since we change it here, right? It is equal to three, so it's running the first statement. A is um, greater than three. Yeah. Okay. So um, there are many times that we, we want to get input from the Python running, like, like here. I want to input something to my written Python script. What you do is very simple. There's a tool called, so open it VI, there's a tool called sys, import sys for system. Let's delete everything. And print, uh, print haha, just for the sake. And then print sys dot argument v. I'm gonna print them first. And I'll print, Oh, let's just save it there. Save and quit. If I do Python, it prints Python in a list. My, my name of the script, which is practice.py in a list. Okay. What if I type like this? It's printing. The characters that I enter after the, the name of the Python script in a list. I try again. Um, I'll give Diane as well. Then it adds Diane to the list. All right. So the sys.argv is a list. First item is the name of the script. Second item is the input. All right. So what if I want to get the the, the letter coming afterwards, the K, Kevin. So let's edit them. Bear in mind of this. So I'm gonna open, practice. And here I wanna set name as sysargv, which was a list of this. Uh, my uh, name is second item which is one, okay? Then I'm gonna print, print my name is name. And save, quit. All right, if I don't, uh, I'll just make a capture of this. And then I'll run Python, practice, dot pi and give Kevin as an input. See? Now something that you enter in a shell script, uh, in, a, in a shell in command line is going into your script. So imagine if you are making a pipeline for sharp project, then you'd be giving your subject name or location of the path into your Python script using sysarg. Okay, what if you delete Kevin? It's giving an error. Because you remember, we typed um, get the second item, but the list has only one item, so it's giving an error. List index out of range. Here the list is this, and the index is one, but there's no one index here. So this is uh, index out of range. This is very common error that we get as well, so get familiar with them. Okay. All right. So um. Those are the practicals. I sent you the PDF, so you can just do the practicals. I'll try it today or tomorrow if you have time um, and try to search the web if you can't solve it. But, but, but be, be remember that, but please remember you have to strive searching it. Otherwise, um, it'll be quite slow to learn. Okay, try doing them. I'll um, go through them next session. Okay, there are two pages. It can be a little bit different and there, there are many things that we didn't go, to, go through today. So yeah, try doing that. And for the next session, please get your Anaconda. So we'll be using Jupyter Notebook, all right? And also if you want to use JupyterHub, um, which is provided by partners, 
get AnyConnect ready or Diane will help you to install AnyConnect in the beginning of the session next time. Okay, thank you. Kevin, I have a few questions about the practicals. 